this past Saturday, the finals for the Illustrials Championship League Season 2 happened, and I've got my match versus Red Baron competing for third place. But real quick, if you missed my deck profile for this finals, you can find that video up in the card above or linked down in the description below. With that out of the way, let's get right into the match. So I end up winning the die roll just barely, 4-2, to two, so I'll be on the play here, which I really like being able to get my counter in set early to start answering Baron as he throws out his big threats. So here, just kind of mulling over my hand, I remember I have one Elestral, so here, I don't feel much pressure, I just expend to draw, just build up my resources, I don't really want to throw out my one Elestral, have an answer, and then just have nothing to do. And Baron takes this opportunity to play a Rum Gem here to search out the Equal Links, which I am A-OK -okay with, because this is not a bad target to have my Elestral which in hand, which is Galaxy, run over it. It's not very threatening, and it's something easy that, again, I can just throw something out and attack with. Rum Gem gets the one spirit off me, so I am down to 18, but again, I'm not too worried, I'm not too far behind yet, and I feel like I can easily get caught up, especially when Baron plays something like a shield here, bringing him down also to 17 spirits. He still has the Rum Gem on board, but that's one answer out of the way, and I still have my Galaxy, thankfully, to be able to do something with it the following turn. I can recast it easily. Probably better than the PTA there, though. PTA would have also gotten the Rumba Gem off the board because the guys still be able to attack. But here, Baron just throws out the equal link, sets up the Floy Forest. So I'm thinking, oh, big attackers here, but actually chooses two Nexus off of it to pop the runes, though he's debating on which one he wants to send it to. He ends up sending to the Rumba Gem, which means that I don't find it very worth it to cast the Tsunami here. I could, but since I know I have a Galaxy in hand, I can still easily attack over both of them. So it doesn't really matter here. It would be one spirit for one spirit anyway. So I just let it go and take three spirits of damage. So I have fallen behind a bit in spirit total, but I also have the resting on your laurels, which is the other reason I'm not too worried because I can easily clean up the board, get the equal links out of the way. I can Ambrosia to heal myself back up. And now Baron has no counter runes because he used the shield last turn. And I can easily just recast that Galaxy and run right over the Ramajum. And I'm back in control of the board and spirits would be even at that point. And actually here, I did draw into a Necrof, so I chose to go that route and actually get ahead a bit in spirits by expanding the one. And the other reason I did this was because Galaxy plays a bit better into PTA, so I wanted to kind of conserve that functionality over just Necrof. And Necrof ends up being an Earthquake anyway, and Baron goes into another Rumma Jump to get another search. So two removal out of Baron's grasp here. Very happy to see that Earthquake gone. Of course, he grabs the Viscerous, his best attacker here for following turn, so I can set up for that. Do take the one from the Rome Jump, but again, I'm head in Spiritual, so I'm not too worried about that. And I've got a good grip of hand, a good grip of cards in hand to be able to start uh, throwing more stuff out on board and answering what Baron has. Though I do remember this hand was a bit awkward because I tried to sign at the very beginning with the Galaxy and Tsunami, and I think it was Ambrosia. I was like, ah, I kind of want to keep this because I think this could come in real clutch. So I decided, uh, the Triant Lock can come in real clutch, so I decided to keep that. So here, Galaxy attacks over the Rumajum, Baron casts out the Viscerous and chooses to crash the Galaxy, meaning I'm that he gets rid of both of them, but can cast out of the Viscerous, which I'm actually fine with. He does have two back row, which is a bit scary, so I can't exactly answer the Viscerous. Uh, well, there's a chance that I can't attack over the Viscerous, but at the same time, at least there's a chance if it's bluffs and I can kind of pressure it that way. But here, I actually opt to go Smoltuga. Baron can't exactly hit over it without committing more cards, and I know I have some options to try to answer it, so I just decide let's grab the neck rough. And actually, I think at this point, yeah, no, that's what it was. The turn prior, I debated going Necrof to stall and hold the Galaxy or just put on the pressure. And I decided to put on the pressure the previous turn, try to bait out these counter runes. And here I'm just kind of forced to go for the Smoltuga. Fortunately, can't really take advantage of the Viscerous being in defense, but it is what it is. Smoltuga does eat another Earthquake, so that's two Earthquakes out. And this actually puts me in a very commanding position. So I'm feeling really good about here. He does play out the Tectorus, throws out the Viscerous, and attacks, and I end up taking the two here. I forget, I think my back row is a Gorgon's Gaze, so I'm trying to save it to, for when Baron attacks into something to cause it to crash. But here, this is very interesting. It's a bit risky because he has PTA. It kind of stops this by throw out the Necrof here, which notably can't take out either of them, but he decides not to answer it. So at this point, I'm just going to set up Triant Lock. If he has the Gorgon's Gaze, that gets it out of rip, but doesn't really answer the Necrof. I got my own Gorgon's Gaze to try to stop those from attacking over the Necrof, and I have another face down card, which I believe one is PTA, one is Gorgon's Gaze. Maybe the first one was P uh, PTA or a shield. I can't remember exactly which one, but I'm here. I'm able to just attack over the Viscerous. I fear that's the bigger threat because it can spawn more stuff, and Tectorus dies a bit harder to the Earth or the Gorgon's Gaze. Anyway, Baron having to expend to draw is also huge here. Though I do think he's just trying to dig for answers, and he does have the Ambrosia to bring it back. So at this point, it's a, Baron's at eight spirits to my four spirits. So it seems like Baron's got the well. Baron does have the lead in spirits, but this Triant Lock is putting on a lot of pressure, especially since it's with the Necrof here. Turning the Tectorus to defense smart, just so he can't take more damage. So here I'm just debating what I want to do, and I decide I'm trying to play around the eruption here. My four spirits, so I decide it's fine to cast the Foamy, just get an extra Elestral on board, start poking a bit more. Foamy gets me great value because it can also force a Gorgon's Gaze. 
so I can't cast a slug here. So I'm perfectly fine with this one here. I just don't want to die to an eruption. At this point, if it's double eruption, I would die anyway. So just kind of chilling here on board. Baron's just deciding, how does he out it? That trident lock necrup is huge, especially when backed up by counter runes. And then the foamy just kind of puts some extra pressure on here. He ends up casting out the equal links. I think he's going to try to pop the trident lock. But again, I got the Gorgon's Gaze to protect it. And I do have enough spirits on board to be able to do that. He actually chooses to attack over the foamy and not Gorgon's Gaze, it, which surprises me here. Because now I can just go Sluggle. I can regen up and feel a lot more comfortable. Though, I mentioned the whole eruption out thing here because at the point I was thinking about it, but in hindsight, it didn't matter. I had Necrof out here. Eruption was not going to be an out anyway. So even better. But Slug will bring it back up to five spirits. I just debate here and I decide to just go for it. I Nexus one from Poseidon onto the Slug with Poseidon's effect and ascend into Majesty. I got the combo out. Didn't get off against my weekend socks, but I'm so happy I got it off here in the most disgusting way because it's under Trident Lock with Necrof as well. And Baron just scoops here because there's nothing you can do against this board. So getting into game two here, Baron is on the play this time around, looking to crawl back into this match, make it tie one one. He casts Eviscerus and sets three back row and passes the turn to me. So here I just have a nice foamy here, not feeling too pressured to do anything because I do have some back row. It's not great having one back row in a foamy, but I'm also not feeling terrible because foamy puts on a lot of pressure here as well. So here Baron actually decides to expend a draw, which is pretty big, and then attack into the foamy, which I decide to let go. And he does have the Gorgon's Gaze for the foamy, can get out the Viscerous, but I'm actually fine with that because I do have a resting on your laurels, which is the other reason I was okay keeping this hand because I can equalize on the board with that resting on your laurels. And I do exactly that, take out the attack position one. Uh, one. I do have another last on hand. It is the Galaxy, D does play around PTA, so I can try to take out that defense position Viscerous. And what Baron will need here is either a Gorgon's Gaze or a Shield of Achilles, but does use the PTA here. So I'm not feeling too bad. I get both the Viscerouses off on board. I force another PTA out. So I just dealt with a ton of answers, got rid of two Viscerous. I mean, I don't necessarily, I only have to deal with one more, not spawn anything. So I'm feeling pretty good about that turn. Here, Baron does cast out the neck rough, be able to hit for one. And here I'm debating, I do have a Tsunami face down and I'm just debating, do I want to cast it, change neck rough to defense to then be able to attack over it? Or do I just want to hold? Here, I decide to do that because I do want to put the pressure on. Even if it does get met by a counter rune, it, it does force out that answer though, which is, I think, the important thing here. I don't really want to crash. I do have another Galaxy, thankfully, to be able to put the pressure on again. Again, play around Poison Tipped Arrow. Though here, notably, Gorgon's Gaze is not an out for the Necrof, so he won't be able to, like, go well, he'll have to Gorgon's Gaze during the battle step anyway. So that's another reason to do it here, is now the Galaxy can kind of hit in without any issues. Gorgon's Gaze, not as effective, just kind of goes minus two spirits or a shield here as well. Uh, just bouncing the Galaxy back to hand is also not ideal for Baron, because again, I can pressure it then to crash as well. Baron having to, lets the Necrof go, and then having to expend a draw is big here. He's just not finding his Celestials. He ends up using an Earthquake on the Galaxy, which again, I'm very happy about because uh, while it does open up the opportunity for my Majesty to stick a bit uh, better, here, Baron's just at such a deficit of spirits having to answer all my Elestrals. Everything I've been doing has been cheaper than what Baron's been had to do to answer it. And again, same thing here with the Foamy. Foamy, he answered with the PTA, but it got two spirits out of him for the one. Doesn't matter if I didn't get to attack. Uh, sure, I lost a body on board, but I'm also not too worried about it, especially when I've got a PTA behind. Here, I decided it was worth it. I was like, so far head on spirits that just taking, having to give up three spirits, just get rid of the Viscerous, I think was worth it just to kind of keep the buy off board since it was a five attacker. Baron opts to use the spirit from it to cast Ambrosia, which is the smart play because he does, in terms of spirit economy, it does get him one additional spirit than if he had just attacked and let it go because he got, was able to get me to use one spirit and net back three spirits versus the two more he would have gotten off of me anyway and he would lose the one spirit so it's a plus three in spirits versus a plus two in spirits so here i don't have a great hand to answer the board with an open board state so i decide to drop here it does bring me closer to the spirit uh difference between the two of us but i figure just using the fact that i'm head on spirits to try to get better cards in hand is super important i had a sign and tap up so one away from the majesty but i didn't feel like risking it because i still had to dig for the majesty and isn't a searchable piece so i'd rather find better cards such as a neck rough and a back row that's huge and one more card in hand that might come in handy. So Baron has to play out the Rummage Gem to grab the equal links to be able to answer the board. He is out of his uh, Viscerouses, though he could have gone Tectorus here. I think he has a Feloy Forest in hand from what I remember, so that could have been a good play, but I can understand wanting to deal with the back row and Feloy Forest can still try to compete with the neck rough, especially if Baron has both a Demeter and a Feloy Forest to be able to pump up the Viscerous. So here, that's kind of what that telegraphs to me. I has out the Aphros, which I draw for turn. Attack with the Necrof. Baron is forced to use the Gorgon's Gaze. And here I just debate, do I crash? Do I keep him off a body to keep him off crazy Ascension plays or any other shenanigans such as Nexus plays with equal links? And I decide to do that. I think it's just good to keep him off of resources and preserve that Necrof on board. 
even though if it costs me a Lustral. I just don't think it matters here. So here, Baron does cast out the Equalinks. He does have the Demeter for only one spirit, interestingly enough, trying to preserve those spirits. Maybe just try not to die to an eruption. Here I decide to Tsunami it, just to kind of keep my Necroph on board, because I did have the right read. He did have the Floy Forest, so he tries to buff up his Equalinks, but I have the Laurels. He played right into it, and that was the other card I got off of the Drops of Left. Just a perfect three cards to finish off that game. I do have an Ambrosia just to buff up my Spirit deck, just because, but I Enchant Necroft with the X2, an extra Spirit, hit him for two, and Baron did have actually the Ascension of the Sakurasaur, which would have blocked me out, so that was huge, though I had the Laurels, but that was such a huge play there. So I ended up winning, getting third place for the ECL 2, 2-0 to Baron. In my opinion, those were two very exciting games though probably not as exciting for Baron, especially that second game, just not finding those Elestrals and just being behind on Spirits the entire time is a very frustrating position to be in. But I think that first game was a very tense back and forth, and thankfully it seems like I was able to navigate it I shouldn't say the more effectively, but it seemed like my answers just lined up a bit better what was, with what was going on on the board. But there were some really dicey scenarios where I did fall behind, but I was able to pull my way back in. And that ending there, I'm so happy I got off that Majesty, but I feel like it was very rude the fact I had a Trident Lock Necrup to boot. Two very hard cards to answer, especially with Baron being down two Earthquakes already. So uh, personally, I'm very happy how the final went, but I'm also biased because I did end up winning it. Luck and Words did compete for first and second place. They should have their gameplay videos uploaded to their channel at some point in the near future. But you can also check out the stream where we had Alex, Melodic Owl build, as well as Moxie commentating both the top uh, third and fourth place match and the first and second place match. I'll have all that stuff linked down in the description below. But now I want to hear from you all. What was your favorite part from this match? In terms of wrapping up ECL content, I know there's been talks of doing another Steal the Spirits podcast, just kind of wrapping it up. No promises on when that will be out because scheduling is an issue at times, but we do have an interest in doing that, just kind of discussing a lot of our final thoughts on the ECL, our elemental pairings, and whatnot. In terms of wrap videos for myself, I do plan on recording one final video just kind of going over the entire ECL season from my perspective and just a casual sit down video. So if you're looking forward to that, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on a notification bell so you're notified when I do upload more content such as that wrap up video. But with that being said though, look forward to more content coming out real soon.